Howdy YouTubers, this is Nick. Uh, I'm going to uh, show you how to take apart a Levette stepper movement, a, Le a Levette stepper clock movement, uh, to install a crazy clock. Um, this one happened to come out of a uh, clock from Zazzle, uh, and it's going to be a particularly uh, easy one to modify. I'll show you the whole steps there. So this already presumes that you've taken the clock, taken it off the clock. The way you do that is you carefully pull the second hand straight up off of the knob. It'll just come off. And then underneath that, there's a lock, um, lock nut. Uh, you just unscrew that, and then the second, excuse me, the minute hand will come right off. Uh, the hour hand is a friction fit. You'll need to pull that. Again, when you're pulling the hands that are friction fits, the second hand and the hour hand, pull them straight to make sure that you don't break either the pin that connects them to the movement. Hello, Luna. Luna, go away. Or the um, hand off of the thing. You just want to make sure you don't break it. Um, having done that, there's a uh, nut that holds the shaft, this threaded portion of the shaft, onto the front of the clock. You unscrew that, and then the thing pops right out. Uh, there's this little pad, uh, adhesive pad, that is on the back as well. Uh, so you have to sort of pull that, but it, that comes off real easy. And what you're left with is this movement. Um, this is representative of a lot of uh, different clocks. Um, they all have the same guts, even though they might have different internal arrangements. Uh, this one is made by Cortex. This is the same movement that you would get from Clockit.com. Uh, that's Clockit with a K, K-L-O-C-K-I-T.com. Uh, and like I said, it's going to be a very, very easy one to modify. Um, to get the lid off, um, this is a little bit different than most clocks. Most clocks you pry here outwards to get the thing off. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to push. It's, it's hard to see, but there's a tab here that actually goes in to release the back. And it's easiest to go from bottom. And actually, you want to pry outward. And you probably can't see it, but there's a tab that you're separating to get some clearance there. And then the inside will go downward, releasing the top of the, of the case. We're going to repeat that on the other side. Some movements that you find out there will have three catches. The third one usually is inside uh, where the battery goes uh, and is a third thing that you have to release in order to get the lid to, to come off. Uh, the other thing to watch out for when you're doing this is that it's conceivable that if you spring the top of the lid off, that it will throw a whole bunch of gears all over the place. So watch out for that as you're disassembling these clocks. They obviously weren't made to be disassembled easily. Um, so they, they don't make it easy, but if you can get the lid released like that much, pull all the tools out and just back off and carefully and slowly work the top of the lid off to make sure that you don't have a plastic gear explosion. little wiggle and there we are. Now, the uh, Cortex movements, it's very nice because it's got this plastic thing that encloses most of the gears that makes it a lot easier to deal with. Um, at this point what you want to do is you want to take your finger and you want to hold the two battery contacts in because otherwise they'll fall out and they could disappear. Uh, hold this in, turn it over, and lift the thing off. Now this is going to be different than a lot of movements. A lot of movements what you're going to do is you're going to want to pull the gear train out. Uh, but in this case, the, the, the board, most of the gears, um, and the coil for the stepper motor itself are enclosed in this plastic thing. So um, you, this is the, the path of least resistance. Now at this point we've exposed as much of the inner workings as we need to. Uh, so what we've got here is we've got the board, so this is the potted chip that has the, the oscillator. Uh, on the other side of these two pads are the crystal, uh, and then these go off to the coil, and um, you'll just have to trust me on that. Uh, actually, if you look in here, you can see that these kind of go into the, the bottom end of the coil. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to cut these two traces here, you can see that they very, very conveniently labeled uh, this one as positive and this one as negative, VDD and ground, that's positive and negative. We're going to cut uh, these two traces up here, 
we're going to cut these two traces over here. And conveniently as well, you see they've exposed some copper pads over here for C4. Uh, we'll be re reusing those, repurposing those to pull the coil wires off. Uh, and also C1 here, which is also unpopulated. Um, that's actually going to be above where we're going to cut, so I'll just scrape off some of the um, solder resist here and solder the wires onto these two traces right about there. I'm not going to do that on camera because it's noisy and boring, uh, but I will uh, come back as soon as I'm done with the operation and show you the result. Okay, and we're back. You can see what I did here is I cut a, uh, the traces along this line here underneath this white wire. You can just make out, I hope, on the video, maybe uh, a Dremel mark there. There's another one underneath the yellow here, but it's not very, very visible because the wires are in the way. Um, so having done that, uh, and also I've routed the, the wires off that way, uh, what you now do is you uh, grab the case. You're going to need to hold the, the battery contacts down because they'll fall out otherwise. And you'll see that in the bottom of the case, the battery contacts that touch up there, you want to align the case when you do this so that that's where they go because that's the way the thing wants to go. Uh, this gear here will fall out if you turn this over, so you want to try and put the, the lid on top of it if you can. And now we can flip over and it's back the way it wants to be. Massage it a little bit and it drops right into place. So the worst case scenario, if you're really stuck like this and you really can't get the case back on, the only thing that you're left with is that you can route the wires outside the case and use double-sided foam tape and stick the board on top. So that that's always an option. And this Teflon coated wire uh, is fine enough that you can usually stick it in there and it'll be alright. And I will just use uh, double-sided foam tape and uh, stick the board up here on top. And that will have to do. Uh, at this point, it's not a bad idea to go grab a AA battery and put it in there and test and make sure, before you assemble the clock any further than this, that it actually ticks. If you hold it up to your ear, you should hear the distinctive ticking um, and, of course, that ticking should be modified to be whatever uh, firmware is loaded on the, on the board. Um, so there you go. Bye now.